Come see you in a bit. Tried doing some different audio styles and then my GoPro didn't record any of the audio because I didn't have it set up. And then other times it would just drop out because I'm trying this like wireless thing. And then I just have no audio on anything. So then I just kind of made all this footage useless because I was trying to talk to you guys and explain things. So that was part of it. And then I got sick. And then I couldn't talk because my voice sounded even worse than it normally sounds. So I figured I'd just go through like a quick video of some stuff that showed up. So I'll show you some of the parts that are going to end up going into the new engine when we build it. So I just grabbed some stuff. Uh, we're doing King racing bearings for rods and mains. So King uh, told me what to order talk to them so we got the uh, P max coating on our king bearings last year we were just using the bimetals so I'm pretty sure these are tri-metal now with their black coating on it so we'll see how that works out the bimetals worked good I was replacing them once a season which is a, over a hundred passes so they told me to go with the Pmax coat this time, so we'll see if that uh, makes any difference or if we wipe it out. I do like uh, how King Bearings packages their stuff though, because they put them in individual instead of slammed in a box, just bouncing off each other. So that's always nice. So we're doing King Bearings. Not sponsored. Talked to them at uh, PRI again. They were super nice. They're very helpful. Uh, you can use uh, Messenger. I'm big on not to, uh, I don't like to socialize a lot if I don't have to. That's why I'm kind of doing this. It's kind of helping me. It doesn't help though because there's nobody here. So, and I have like, well, actually we hit 100 subscribers back then. So we have some people that watch the videos, I guess, but. Uh, yeah, this is hopefully going to kind of get me out of my shell a little bit, try and meet more people. Uh, we're doing Clark head gaskets. So we got 50 thou copper head gaskets. Uh, no coolant holes in them because the block's fully filled. And so, yeah, we don't, that'll help not leak anything into the bottom, but the block's full anyways. So we're going to use those. So once again, Clark, I've had their stuff for last couple years, pretty good. We, we were MLS gaskets before that. Um, they weren't bad, they worked for what they did too, but uh, we ended up going uh, double O-ring, so it's got a receiver groove and uh, an O-ring in the head. So that works good with the copper gaskets. And then uh, we got a, pack of jets from BLP so methanol jets so these are from uh, 180 to 230 so none of those guys sponsor us they're just helpful main thing I do is uh, I find companies that treat me like an actual racer want to call them not somebody that's just like, oh, this guy's buying one part off of us. He's not a freaking NHRA pro mod guy that's going to spend 500000 with us this year. So that's kind of a big deal to me with companies. Um, I'm kind of picky like that in a way. Um, the main thing is, like, I realized that I put stuff together in my garage and I'm learning as I go and I don't know everything and there's better products. But I also know that you can make things work that aren't the best. And it comes down to a lot of it's money and name and not actual quality. So the, like, I just look for companies that treat me like a person and they make you feel like you're part of like a bigger picture almost, if that makes sense. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, 
if your tune-up's wrong, you're going to break anybody's part anyways. If you do something stupid, you're going to break their stuff. If you forget to bolt something together and it falls apart and takes out a part, it doesn't matter whose part was on there because you screwed up. So there's different scenarios where things fail and things don't fail. But yeah, if, if somebody calls you, just treat them right and they're a freaking customer for life. Like we went with CP Carrillo this year. Uh, last year I needed two pistons because we had a timing mishap where the timing didn't pull out. And uh, yeah, I went down the track with <laughs> only 10 degrees of timing pulled on a 400 shot where we were normally pulling a lot more. So that uh, rattled some stuff, burnt some spark plugs off, pist or uh, spark plug tips off, and uh, two pistons got right by the intake valve relief, rolled over, and then ended up cracking because of that. So when I tore it down to figure out what happened, Notice that, and uh, CP was able to send me two pistons that they had on the shelf that actually worked out. The funny thing is the pistons they had on the shelf were rated for 500 horsepower, is what they rate them for. They are actually a dirt track piston. Um, then they kind of dug a little deeper asking me why I was using that piston. Uh, the piston was actually designed for my combo back in the day when it wasn't spraying as much nitrous. I was told them maybe like 150, 250 shot I would spray. We were spraying 400 on top of our, say 800 that we were making. So we we're in the 1200 range on a 500 horsepower piston. So I measured the dome thickness and the skirt height and ring land area and everything. The piston was like the exact same as their shelf piston. So they sold me, not as the right piston for my combo. <laughs> because it was only rated for 500, but uh, they sold it as the right piston dimensionally of what I gave them. So something to think about. Uh, some companies will ask you why you're doing something. And then the reason is because they've been making pistons and stuff for so long that they're just trying to figure out why you're using a garbage. Yeah, so a CP. I've been talking to Brian through Instagram ever since I needed to rush some pistons last year to get us going at the track again. So they designed this piston for small block. So it's a SB2 piston still, 10 to one compression ratio with the uh, six, six inch rod that we got. Uh, 48cc heads is what we're using. 9.29 deck uh, height and then 4.165 bore with our four inch stroke. So piston uh, weight came in at 517 grams, which is way heavier than anything I've used before, but that's because <laughs> I was using dirt track pistons in our nitrous motor. So, okay, so this is actually the piston that was in the motor that I had to call and try and replace. I'll see if we can see it. The uh, so that when the nitrous mishap happened, it uh, you can see started knocking this off, and then right there you can see the actual crack that started happening, and then the crack went down into the top ring land. So, but you could tell like that's pretty small height there. And actually, pretty small skirt compared to that too. So this is nice beefy piston. These used to be uh, top gas ports. On uh, the new piston, we went to uh, side gas ports. So what a gas port is, in case some of you don't know, uh, cylinder pressure pushes down and would blow through these top holes here which get in behind the ring and push the ring into the cylinder so that's the normal gas porting is straight down so the new setup on these you can see the uh, little half circles there so when the rings in there 
the cylinder pressure will come down past this top land, get into this hole, push in, come in, try and push the ring out into the cylinder wall. I think we're still gonna do the Cerakote on top. Um, I didn't ask if they offered it. I'm pretty sure they do offer it if you buy it from them. But I've been uh, doing my tops for a while now.